So now we're kind of getting into this first bit that's uh, somewhat new, okay? And I think maybe you might have talked about black body radiation and Planck's law um, somewhat in some of your other physics classes. Um, but just in case you don't remember, just in case to go through that, um, all objects above zero Kelvin emit thermal radiation. They have to, okay? Um, so I am an object. I'm not zero Kelvin. I, I'm about 310 Kelvin. And because I'm about 310 Kelvin, I emit thermal radiation. That thermal radiation just so happens to be infrared for an object that's about 300 Kelvin. Okay. As we get, as we increase the temperature of that object, the type of radiation that object will emit becomes more energetic as the object becomes hotter. So in fact, you're used to hearing that IR radiation is thermal radiation, right? Technically, all EM radiation is thermal, okay? You're used to hearing that infrared is thermal radiation, and that's just a very human centrist idea because humans just so happen to be a temperature that emits infrared. Technically, all electromagnetic radiation can be classified as thermal radiation, okay? So an ideal emitter of this thermal radiation is called a black body. And black body radiators follow the Planck distribution, okay? Or known as uh, Planck's law. So this equation right here, okay? So this rho, this is given as uh, energy density. And as you can see that that is a function of wavelength as well as temperature. So the energy density depends on what your wavelength is and it also depends on what the temperature is, okay? Um, so the energy density will have units of joule per meter to the fourth power. However, if we were to integrate this energy density, so if I integrate this from some T1 to T2, uh, this rho as a function of lambda and T times d lambda, well, d lambda has units of meters. The Planck distribution has units of joules per meter to the fourth power. So when we carry out this energy, we get truly, uh, so sorry, if we carry out this integration, we truly get an energy density in joules per meter cubed, okay? So these uh, graphs right here are the Planck distribution here that I've, uh, or that have, have been plotted. And so what this integral means is if I were to take the area under one of these curves, which is the same as taking this integral, right? I get joules per meter cubed, okay? I get the energy density. Uh, I also wanna point out here, I'm not gonna derive this Planck distribution, but I'm gonna note here, take a look at this chunk Okay, it's Boltzmann, right? That is a Boltzmann distribution, okay? That is E raised to the power. Um, and it's not, it's not negative in there because there's some mathematical manipulations that have taken place, okay? Um, unless, of course, I made a mistake, which is entirely possible. Um, we'll just go for it the way that I have this written for now. Um, but you notice here that it is E raised to the HC divided by lambda. Well, remember, energy equals HC divided by lambda. Okay, that is energy. So this is E, it's still E raised to the energy divided by K Boltzmann T, okay? So it's still, it is a Boltzmann distribution, but now this energy is HC divided by lambda. It's the energy of a photon, okay? So I've got this really cool black body simulator right here that I've also linked into the Canvas site. Um, and this is to show you um, what happens to ideal black body radiators as you change the temperature. So for now, this little slider here, so this is like a cool manipulate thing. So the slider here is at the temperature of the sun, you know, approximately 6,000 Kelvin or so. 
Um, and our sun emits white light. The reason why it does that is because it is an object that is 6,000 Kelvin. It emits all of the visible wavelengths as well as some ultraviolet. So you can see the tail end of this distribution goes past the UV. So our sun obviously emits some ultraviolet. You knew that. But our sun also emits a lot of IR, which you can see that goes past the visible region. Okay. And so even though it's peaking like in the green, to our eyes, the sun kind of appears yellow. Okay. So this is really cool. As I turn the temperature down, notice here that not only does the energy density decrease, but the peak wavelength also decreases, right? So now if I go to like a light bulb, maybe a typical light bulb, that's 3000 Kelvin. So you can see that, that orange color there, that's the color that it would appear to our eyes, okay? So as I go past, you know, I can see we get that nice like yellow, sun color kind of okay um, as i get colder and colder it's shifting out to the red end of the spectrum and i can uh, zoom in on this scale here so you can see this light bulb this 3000 kelvin it's actually kind of peeking out into the infrared um, but it appears kind of orange um, because the tail end of this distribution is like into the blue and green most of the distribution is into the red end of the spectrum and if I keep turning this all the way down, maybe we turn this down to um, a temperature that's like, you know, that of the Earth, about 300 Kelvin or so. Um, you can see it's not very luminous at all because it's cold. It's only 300 Kelvin. And so if I zoom way in on this scale here, assuming that I can, look, the tail end, there it is. And uh, maybe if I turn the temperature just up a little bit, yep. So that's a 350 Kelvin object. It's not emitting any visible light. It's only emitting infrared light, okay? Um, and this is also really cool. So I'm gonna turn the scale way down. Um, if I go way up to like a Sirius A, this is a, a blue dwarf star. Check it out, it's about 10,000 Kelvin. And look, it would appear blue to our eyes and if you look at this, it's still emitting all the visible lights, but it's predominantly emitting blue and ultraviolet, okay? Um, so in this black body radiator, because this is based off of Boltzmann, we recognize that this is an ensemble property. This is a property of a mole of objects, okay?